tribute by the National Democratic Congress. The stature and principles espoused by Flight Lieutenant General John Rawlings make it difficult to eulogize him in just a few paragraphs. This is because our relationship with him as our founder, as an individual, and as a leader stretches over four decades. This tribute gives us the opportunity to say only a few things about this legend in Ghana's political history. President Rawlings was and still is an enduring institution that epitomized a value system that seeks to promote the good of society. His commitment to promote progress for all, especially the powerless, the voiceless, and the marginalized, is matchless. He hated exploitation of ordinary people by people who are powerful and rich. His towering image, charisma, and leadership style endeared him to all who were thirsty for justice, irrespective of their status in life, rich, poor, women and, wo women and men, literate and non-literate, and irrespective of their religious persuasions. The attempt to restore the high professionalism and respect for which the Ghana Army is known the world over led to their arrest, that is he and his other, uh, uh, other ranks, and subsequent court martial. We saw a manifestation of his selflessness, courage, his readiness to sacrifice his life for others, and intolerance for corruption when he asked the court to acquit all his other men standing trial with him. He offered to carry all the punishment for the insurrection alone. The court martial was the trigger for the uprising of June 4th, 1979 uprising. Officers and junior ranks who saw his vision of cleaning up the rots in the Ghana Army, then under the leadership of the senior officers of the Ghana military, stormed the Bureau of, Dan Ga of, Bureau of National Investigation, where he was incarcerated, and freed him to lead the uprising for restoration of the dignity of the military and the country. The June 4th uprising was short-lived. Between June 4th to September 25th, 1979, because it was meant to halt the corruption then in the high places and seek accountability of persons in power. It was not the intention of the June 4th revolution to disrupt the program of return of the country to multi-party democracy. Hence, the country went through the elections as planned, and the civilian government was sworn in. His conviction that Ghana could progress only on the back of values and principles of June 4, and his determination and commitment that those values and principles be firmly integrated in the body politic of Ghana compelled him to lead some progressive officers and men to change the administration of the country on the 31st December 1981. At the advent of the 31st December revolution, Ghana's economy had completely run down. There was shortage of basic foods, basic necessities of life were non-existent, hospitals were empty with no basic drugs, 
and majority of Ghanaians, including highly trained professionals, had to leave the shores of Ghana because they could not make ends meet. In 1983, when the revolution was barely one year old, 2.1 million Ghanaians were deported from Nigeria. And he mobilized all resources of Ghana, including ships of the Black Star Line, Ghana Navy, the aircrafts of Ghana Airways, land transport through our borders, and formed the National Mobilization Program, the NMP, under the leadership of Commodore Steve Obimpe to bring down Ghanaians who were deported back to Ghana. All the deportees were being received at the Aflau, Sankasi, and Tatale borders, Tema and Takwade harbors, and Kotoka International Airport, with medical facilities, psychological counseling, and transport to the respective towns and villages of the deportees. He was committed to reverse the socio-economic state of the country from a country of shortages and queues to a country of plenty. Queues became a thing of the past, and most Ghanaian professionals began to return to help build their country. Black markets in respect of dealings in foreign exchange by Ghanaians, control prices, and kalabule became things of the past. Inflation was brought down, the import license system was eliminated, and economic liberalization became, for the first time after independence, Ghana's economic system. Ghana's exports revenue began to soar, and diversification of the economy was also pursued vigorously. The economic and social infrastructure, which had largely broken down due to years of neglect, underwent serious rehabilitation. Under him, electricity from Akosombo was extended to all the then 10 regions of Ghana. The then 110 district capitals and towns and villages which accelerated development in Ghana. The road sector underwent expansion to the rural areas and the ports in Takrade and Tema saw rehabilitation and expansion as well as our airports at Kotoka, Kumasi and Tamale. The educational system was not left out. The grammar type education, which was inherited from our colonial masters, was changed to the junior secondary school, JHS, and the senior secondary school, SHS. Public universities were increased from three to six. The medical school in the north at UDS, University of Development Studies, was added to the existing two at Kolebu and Konfonochi. The policy of each region having a polytechnic was ruled out to address the middle manpower requirement for the development, for the industrial development of the country. Several political landmarks were achieved in the decade that the 31st December Revolution lasted. Among these are the reversal of the economic decline of the early 1980s, the restructuring of the state institutions, political stability, the mobilization of women under the leadership of Her Excellency Nana Konedo Ajiman Rollins, the founding, the founding of the National Democratic Congress, the building of the foundations of the current Fourth Republic. Given that Rollins meant the PNDC was a provisional administration, he ably guided and tailored the process of transition to the constitutional rule that began in Ghana in 1992 and has since endured. The process created the opportunity for the founding of the National Democratic Congress to help consolidate the values that Jerry John Rawlings had always espoused. Since his message over the decade resonated with the ordinary Ghanaian, he easily won the first and second general elections in the Fourth Republic with the party he founded, the NDC. Perhaps it is appropriate to state here that His Excellency President Jerry John Rawlings signed the party's manifesto with his blood at home to signify the deep faith 
he had in the party to the principles which he believed in. Indeed, many of the persons that served in these administrations of the AFRC and PNDC have held different positions in the NDC and are still loyal members of the party. The role of President Jerry John Rawlings as the founding father of the NDC is immortalized by Article 5 of the NDC Constitution and states the founding father of the National Democratic Congress is Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, upon whose vision and leadership the party was established. On the completion of his two terms as president in the Fourth Republic, President Jerry John Rawlings took up the position of the chairman of the Council of Elders of the party and did not stop advising and admonishing the party until his unfortunate passing on November 12, 2020. As a party, his death is difficult to bear, and a huge vacuum has been created that will be difficult to fill. To fill. But we are consoled by the fact that his legacy of establishing the most enduring democracy in the, count, in the history of the Republic of Ghana bears testimony to the principles and values that pushed him into the political life of Ghana a little over four decades ago. Ghana, Africa, and the world have lost one of those rare leaders who did not put personal aggrandizement over service to the people and nation. President J.J. Rollins was a leader and a true son of Africa, who was a peace builder in Africa. Ghana was the first country, the first African country to move into Liberia to, to stop the carnage during its civil war, then to Sierra Leone and Guinea with its own resources before the international community joined in. Under Rawlings, Ghana was in Rwanda during its civil war, where one over one million Rwandese lost their lives. And when all the international community, including the United Nations, withdrew their personnel, President Rawlings ordered our troops under the command of General Anidohu to stay on and save lives. The United Nations appointed him as a peacemaker in the Somali conflict to bring the warring factions in Somalian conflicts to the negotiating table. President Rawlings, we owe you gratitude for helping in the founding of the NDC, the National Democratic Congress. And we assure you that we will uphold your legacy as long as we exist as a political party. Your kind is rare, and we are proud that we have benefited from the fountain of your vision and wisdom. May God grant you, may God grant your soul eternal and perfect and peaceful rest. And may the earth gently, may, may the earth gently lie on your remains. Fare thee well, our leader, our former president, our chairman of PNDC, our chairman of AFRC, our founder, and our chairman of Council of Elders, Head and Way, fare thee well. Thank you. Hachi Huduya of the NDC, one suspected general of the party, reading the tribute of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Bonner. Well, one, he was one of 